When I first started my home lab with Raspberry Pi back in the old days, I would manually install each app I wanted to run on my home server. That was a painstaking process. I would first had to go to the website of each app I wanted to install, read their detailed documentation to find out all the installation steps, run the commands and finally hope that the app is running properly. And then I heard of Docker and since then my home server is incomplete without it. In this video, we are going to talk about how Docker can help you manage your home server extremely easily. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Managing each app individually is fine and honestly I was doing the same, but that was really difficult. And God forbid if I had to backup or migrate my setup to some other place. I would have to repeat the whole process again which took a considerable amount of time and effort. Docker seemed like a very far-fetched idea for me. Every time I would hear about someone using Docker, I would run a thousand miles away the same way you skip the request for subscribing to this channel. But this is the only way for me to grow, so go through this step and press like and subscribe down below. Now that we got that out of the way, let's focus back on the topic. I'm gonna be honest, Docker has quite some learning curve if you are not used to it. Containers, images, volumes, small points and whatnot. All these words made no sense to me at one time. One weekend, I was trying to set up my next cloud instance and I had trouble setting up the certificates. So I thought to myself, why not learn Docker to do this? It took me quite some time, but once I got the hang of it, Docker really made my life easy. Number one reason for using Docker for me was the portability factor. You can test your Docker setup on one system and then if you want to run it on another or maybe a slightly different system, you can do that extremely easily without worrying about the nitty gritty details. If it works on one setup, there is a rare chance that it wouldn't run on the other system. Suppose you test your self-hosted app on your home system and for one reason or another want to migrate it to a virtual private server. Just copy the Docker Compose from your local environment to the remote one and run it again. And you are all set. While we are on the subject of Docker Compose, let me know what are your favorite Docker apps down below in the comment box. The second biggest reason for me to choose Docker is its low resource consumption. Virtual machines are like a hungry resource monster that chews away all your system resources before you even know it. And compared to a full-fledged virtual machines, Docker images can run into only a few megabytes compared to the gigabytes of virtual machines. Due to less overhead and sharing resources with the underlying operating system, Docker containers have a very fast boot up time when you compare them with the virtual machines. For home servers, low resource usage also means lower power consumption, so it can save a lot of energy cost while providing the same amount of services. The third reason for me is isolation. Because Docker apps are self-contained, you can run multiple versions of the same app without any problem. You can package these dependencies with the app and run them in parallel without ever interfering with each other. This isolation can also be helpful if you use two apps that require different versions of the same library. The fourth reason for me is how easy it is to backup your app using Docker. There is a saying that if you don't have a backup, you don't have your data. It's not a matter of if but when your server fails and if you don't have a backup, you could be in a lot of trouble. Virtual Machines introduced a new model of backups where you would make a complete copy of the virtual machine called an image and restore VMs from there. It's a good model that works, but backing up the whole VMs can be quite redundant and creates huge files. With containers, this model is simplified and you would only back up persistent volumes or relevant database images. This leads to a significant reduction in storage space required for backups. 
One of the main reasons for Docker's success is the tooling around it. Docker comes with a lot of powerful automation tools, the biggest one being Docker Compose. Docker Compose lets you automate your deployment. You can define what images you want, what volumes you want to persist, what ports you want to expose for your apps and Docker Compose takes care of everything. Instead of running Docker commands every time you set up your apps, you can use Docker Compose to define your parameters just once and leave all the heavy lifting to Docker Compose. The biggest advantage in my opinion is security. Docker containers only have access to what you allow. It's extremely easy to look inside the container image or the Docker file that it is based on to understand what is really happening. Most, if not all self-hosted apps are open source and their Docker images are publicly available, which makes it easier to catch potentially malicious code. Since there is a limit to what resources a Docker container can access, you can limit the attack surface significantly. And with that, we come to an end of this video. Docker is a great tool if you are planning on setting up a home lab and it's totally worth it in my opinion. So let's stop right here and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.